So for many years now, I think all of us know that Disney has not been doing well. And 2023 is probably one of the weakest years that they've had in a very long time. But today I want to talk about how Disney's failure might be a good thing. And it's not just for the simple fact that right now it's really fun to hate on Disney, but it actually affects the rest of the entertainment industry, especially here in the United States and Hollywood in general. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So if we see here, uh, the most recent releases were the Marvels and Wish, and both of them were absolute failures and they're not going to make their money back. And at the same time, this has been happening for so many years, but this is really a horrible one-two punch, especially at the end of the year, when typically these type of Disney movies normally end up pretty strong. And this is where I want to talk about Disney's failure uh, is a good thing. So the first reason I say that is if you actually look at most of the mainstream media press, most of the times for many years now, typically Disney is always going to be a talking point. And it's kind of funny how whenever a Disney movie is released, normally these mainstream media sites will normally give it positive or praise or just put a lot of emphasis on these type of movies. But over the years, especially now in 2023, things are changing because of the fact that Disney is not doing well, then that means that there's more opportunities for other movies. So if you look at the recent a domestic box office, we see movies up here that you normally would not ever see near the top of the box office, whether it's daily or just total. And in this case, if we're looking at the current domestic box office just for one day, we'll see that Godzilla minus one is on top. Hunger Games is second. There's Animal, Napoleon, The Chef, Wish. And so these are movies that are not really normally seen if you just look it back at five and especially 10 years ago. Typically, if you do have a Disney release, um, they're almost always going to dominate these spots and for a very long time. And this is why it is really important. The first thing is, it's more of a personal thing. I just don't like seeing Disney being, you know, like praised all the time. And it's always going to be mostly positive if you look at these type of sites. And so that just from a personal point of view is refreshing. But what's more important is this. When you look at a movie like Godzilla minus one, first and foremost, this is not a movie out of Hollywood or the United States. This is from Japan out of Toho International. And it grossed about 11 point, it's going to be like 11.5 million right now domestically in the US. That might not seem like a lot. But when you think about a budget of 15 million, even if you add marketing and profit sharing for theaters, even if it's like 30 million, this has so far worldwide already is on its way to profitability, if not already profitable. And this is a really good thing because it's a fan of Godzilla movies. That means maybe there's going to be more out of Toho International. A lot of people did love Shin Godzilla uh, and I'm going to watch that as well. I missed that whenever it came out, but Godzilla minus one is definitely a triumph. And then you see other movies like Animal, now, I really, really enjoy international cinema, especially out of India, you know, South Korea, and also Japan. Those are my favorite places for international movies. And this one has earned uh, 7.2 million domestic. That is crazy uh, for an Indian film. 173,000 international and worldwide, uh, 7.4 million. Uh, and then uh, this really brings uh, Indian cinema more and more into light. And if you have been paying attention, We've been seeing a lot more Indian films in U.S. theaters, which is really awesome because I do enjoy watching it. And I have seen some of these, you know, Indian movies in theaters here as well. And then you have other movies like Shift. Now, Shift is a sci-fi uh, movie, but it is coming out of a small studio. So right now it's earned about $4.8 It comes out of Angel Studios. And I really do enjoy uh, a movie that came out for them called Sign of Freedom. This is absolutely an awesome movie. And I do have reviews on it. I highly recommend it. And then um, The Shift is their latest, uh, I would say big budget movie, but really it's a small budget. This is an independent film, but 
they are doing something that's really different. Um, even though they are uh, considered a faith-based studio, they're not that, you know, they produce more variety of movies. And with th uh, things like Shift, it's kind of heading towards that way. But they still have some of those elements as well. But this is another case where we're starting to see a slow but sure movement towards more variety and more diversity in films. And even though we've always had variety in films, even when uh, Disney was dominating, the vast majority of times since Disney was so large, they took over so many theaters that movies like Godzilla Minus One uh, or movies like Animal would have very little chance. And if they ever were released in the United States, they wouldn't last long. And then for small studios like Schiff, it's almost near impossible sometimes to compete against something like Disney. And so that's why, you know, Disney failing is a good thing because it gives us more variety, more opportunities to see different type of movies. And I would say even for Disney as well, this is a good thing because it will force them to go back to what they've done before and which is producing really wonderful movies, shows, entertainment, you know, theme parks, stuff that people really love Disney for. And so those are my thoughts. If you actually had any thoughts on this, be sure to leave in the comments area below and I'll see you on another episode. Hey geeks, if you are a brand new creator and you simply want something easy to get you started, well, I got something for you with my Creator Starter Kit. This is a super simple step-by-step -step guide that's gonna take you from having no channel to developing your very first YouTube channel along with ideas, thumbnail designs, and other creator tips, including marketing. And the best part is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and get started creating.